Kofi Annan once said that young people should be at the forefront of global change and innovation. Empowered, they can be the key agents for development and peace. This quote is the mindset of the Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, led by Stacey Mehta and his team on the eastern end of Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. YEP is a stomping ground for the inspired and it is also the foundation for budding minds. Children as young as 7 years old will meet long life friends here and children as old as 17 will walk away with skills that will positively impact their careers. When we first started in April of 2007, we wanted 40 children or that was the number I, I expected. By the time we had our opening ceremony on May the 10th, 2007, we had 80 children. YEP has remained um, or has maintained a consistent enrollment during our out of school time programs, which is Christmas, Easter, summer. But what has happened now, post Irma, is that we've hired three additional full-time staff, youth development professionals or YDPs. And what they've brought to the program is a lot of recruitment, they've brought more engagement for our children, and they've alleviated a lot of the administrative day-to-day -day running that we've had when it comes to programming, right? Right now, YEP is at the point where we've seen families. You have brothers and sisters who are out of YEP. We have one family where um, one, the oldest, the, one of the oldest children is one of the, is working on Guana Island. Then you have one that's a mechanic and their youngest sister is now going to YEP. So they're in their 20s and she's 13. Then we have children who went to YEP, like we have a young lady, and I found it most interesting that she came and she enrolled her neighbor's son in YEP. Why? Because he's at home doing nothing. So she saw the need for him to get into something. I mean, our most recent success stories come with swimming with children who are afraid of water, don't believe they can do it. And when they get in and, you know, that relationship of trust is built with an adult. So if we say to them, we know you can do it, they believe that they can do it. Even to tell a child that I'm proud of you, some children have never heard that. And some adults, when they hear it, even parents can't imagine that you have a child in your house or in any home and that child has never heard those words, I'm proud of you. But it happens and it's sad, but it is becoming common. YEP offers a wide range of activities which help children in school and with their social skills. Activities such as computer coding, technology, Google projects, cycling, bike safety, arts, craft, do-it-yourself projects, basketball, swimming, board games, culinary skills, recycling science, confidence building, music, gardening, archery, sailing, snorkeling, and the long list goes on of engaging activities. Growing up in the BVI, life had its ups and its downs, right? And uh, my experience in the BVI has been tremendous. And I wanted to get into something that was more meaningful. So I went into teaching. When I got into teaching, I realized that I wanted to do something more. Academics is very important, but a well-rounded child right, can make an amazing citizen in a country. So an opportunity was presented to me and I was, okay, let's try this. So it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to create something from scratch. So it came from paper to the development, to its progression. Um, I do it because I'm result oriented and I love results. Um, and I see these results. I see children who come to this program and their social skills, their emotional development, their physical development, it's, it's changed. When I taught, I saw academic development. I saw academic frustration. A child who goes to school every day trying to receive instruction, but it might be difficult for them to get through, they need another system of support. YEP is a system of support. It helps children believe that they can do things that they've never experienced. It also helps parents and our community believe in our generation that's coming by giving them the experiences and the skill set that they need. YEP is one of the only places in the BVI where you will find children ages eight socializing with children ages 15. And they, there's a level of respect. This is as much your space as it is my space. So 
I do it because I enjoy seeing what comes from it. It's not an easy task, um, but I love to see human beings develop. And the parents of Yepis also see this development and stand firm behind the morals and success of Yep. As an educator, past educator himself, he knows the ins and outs and he knows the, the different dynamics. So, I mean, he stays on top of the, the kids in terms of their homework and their report cards and stuff go to the center and, you know, they keep they help keep track and keep record and so on. So just having another outlet, because a lot of these kids do not have father figures mm. um, in their lives and they tend to now have some some sort of male reference um, with the, the gentlemen that they come in contact with at YEP and even some of the parents because the parents come out to, to when they do the cleanups, the parents come out for different activities. So having all of that and continuing to build such a team, I think, you know, is um, an exciting thing. My boys attended a program in the Rotong area, Nathaniel and Naim, which they really enjoyed. The only reason I took them out was, of course, the cost factor, because the prices, well, it can't be free, bottom line, it can't be free, but it was a really good program, but once I knew YEP was available and willing to accept them, I made the transition to YEP. Well, the reason I chose YEP as an extra curriculum activity for my son, Tyreek, is simply because of opportunities, you know? Yep has endless opportunities and I think it's the perfect place for him to go. And yeah, just opportunities wise for me. I I would agree with Bianca. Um my son is actively engaged in things like soccer and um he's a part of Purple Dragon. He just made um Purple Belt. And Outside of just like the sporting areas, he would normally um, be engaged in things that would be offered during the summer by conservation and fisheries. Now we don't live in the East End area, but I like the fact that YEP was all encompassing and it wasn't just for the children in that area. So while the children that live in the East End area can participate in the after school activities, during the summer and during the Easter when there are breaks, YEP would have a plethora of things that the children can do outside of the norm, which is just a lot of things that were more sports based. So it was it was interesting because you had a lot of students that came with different backgrounds different interests all now interacting and then the opportunities or the windows of opportunity started to open for the kids to be exposed to other things and it's a free program uh, most yes. of the other programs are very <laughs> limiting in terms of free. what they're offering um, and some can get very expensive so it's not that people don't want to participate but it becomes a bit difficult especially those persons that have more than one kids right so yep being something that was offered free um, and with an extensive curriculum, I found to be very inviting. Yepis grew up to be very well-rounded individuals in the community and around the world. I think indirectly, we meet Yepis throughout the community and we don't realize that they attended Yep. Um, um, there's a young man right now who should be coming back, I think next week. Um, he's in Texas, he has a master's degree in business. Um, there's a young lady who's a farmer, queen, um, there are some that work at Social Security, there's a policeman, there's some in, in the fire department, um, there are a lot of them in banking, right? Um, there's some of them working in this building. Um, many work in government, some are maybe, you know, might be working for the House of Assembly. They're all over the place. Um, and they do have a pride in coming from this establishment and their stories to me over the years has been that they felt safe coming here. And right here was my foundation. Came here after school every afternoon, tried to get involved, and that's why Yep about you know trying to get a youth invested in the community. I think Yep has been like a bond, a bonding, a bonding place, like a, a center for the, the youth in the community. We've heard so many times that the good things in life are free, but what does it really cost to keep the gears moving at this amazing not-for-profit organization? Over the last couple of years, our expensive has. Uh, operating costs have varied. We're at probably about $275,000 a year, give or take. Um, the majority of that is obviously goes into administrative costs. Um, because YEP is a free program, free enrollment based program, and a nonprofit. We don't see revenue coming in unless it's donation, um, donations through um, organizations that want 
to work with us or see what we do and they want to give back to the community through YEP. Through the years, YEP has received donations from Dr. Henry Jarecki, Guana Island Hotel, Pirates Bite, the Rotary Club of Tortola, Unite BVI, the BVI Arbitration Center, Bank of Asia, Scotia Bank BVI, Premier's Office, Britta N Yacht Club, the BVI Bar Association, and other partners for resources. So we have our program partners, and you can see a billboard outside. And then we have our community partners, which we would have a billboard probably in the next four weeks or so, that will show those that give financial contributions to you to try to keep the engine moving and keep what we have afloat. On July 29, 2019, the government of the Virgin Islands donated $100,000 to ensure that children in the community continue to reap the benefits. On May 10th of this year, I made a pledge to YEP of $200,000 uh, that I would deliver in a phased approach. On June 15th, I attended a meeting at Mosquito Island uh, with the funders group and I presented a big cardboard check uh, to YEP's uh, representatives of YEP's board. I'm very happy this morning to have the actual check with me. It is a check of $100,000, uh, which is the first phase of my pledge to the Youth Empowerment Project. Uh, this money is to be used for the expansion of YEP's physical infrastructure, as well as the expansion of YEP's programs. Yes, YEP is a not-for-profit uh, youth development program that's been running for close to 15 years now and they've given a massive amount of time energy support activities uh, to young persons in this community and many communities across the Virgin Islands but of course there are so many other young people who need help who need uh, YEP's services and the government of the Virgin Islands and my ministry a Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Sports, uh, Agriculture and Fisheries is committed to partnering with YEP to serve the community. On behalf of the board, the staff, the parents and the YEPs, I want to say thank you to the minister. This is a tremendous amount for us. Um, this is the single largest donation we've received from the government in the last 14 years. And we feel the commitment from the minister, not only as the minister of education, but also as a person involved in the creation of YEP, and also as a parent who has had who has his children enrolled in YEP. And we thank you. YEP is an organization that has been built on a vision for young people, and we continue to strive to engage young people in a meaningful way and to bring attention to youth development in the BVI. It's still very early in stages of people understanding what we do. Um, youth development is more than babysitting and this, these funds will go towards expanding our physical structure in this center which will allow our enrollment to increase. At present we have 158 children enrolled in our summer program. We have a wait list of about 70 children and hopefully with this funding we're able to increase our capacity and clear that wait list as soon as our structures are um, put in place. <laughs> Can I encourage the cause like other businesses in the community to please, you know, just give a helping hand and donate whatever you can or assist where you can. That would be, you know, really appreciated because yeah, again, so, yeah, that's true. it takes a community yeah, yeah, that's to true. build. With donations, the Youth Empowerment Project will be able to expand and provide the same opportunities to more children in the community. Um, the highest recorded number of children we've ever had on any given day at YEP is 180, right? Um, what this has done to us is because the capacity of the building, I won't state what it is, but it's difficult. So we try to send children in to do thing, activities outdoors. We try to have partnerships where they would go to maybe one of our program partners at HLSCC um, or at a beach or out sailing or something. So where we're, we're always trying to juggle what happens. There have been many discussions of expanding the successful program to other communities. A few years ago there was a chatter about doing one in the 6th district and that was pursued and then we hit some roadblocks. Right now there's discussion about expanding in Rotown, there's, expand, there's discussion about expanding in Virgin Gala. 
it comes down to the community actually saying this is what we want, this is why we want it, and then make it happen. Um, the board of directors of YEP and the government, so to speak, cannot do everything. This is a program created for children. And if we're going to look to try to provide similar programs, or if you'd like the YEP brand in your community, make your voice known. As one of the longest youth programs in the BVI, YEP is affiliated with the Boys and Girls Club of America, which gives them extra resources to share with young people in the community. Um, I think it comes down to a lot of commitment to trying to provide the experiences for children that I never had when I was growing up, that I always wanted. And when you see a child's face become illuminated because they're able to do something, or they're able to do something that they didn't think they could do, it opens the world to them. It builds their confidence, and it also has a rub-off effect on an adult, right? It makes you feel, you know, warm inside, so to speak. So over the years, we've had different visitors in terms of celebrities. Um, we've had celebrity chefs from the Food Network, um, Anne Burrell. We've had Victoria Rowell from The Young and the Restless. Um, we've had entertainers that passed through. Luciano came through most recently. Uh, what generally happens is when people come to visit the BBI, they will ask, is there a program that reaches out to youth or gets involved in youth? And we're here, and you know, as a nonprofit, as a standalone organization, we can say, yes, come, versus waiting on paperwork to be done and that kind of stuff. And then we have a lot of people that just pop by, tourists, People come off of cruise ships because they've heard about us and they want to see what we do. Then we have um, visitors who've been returning to the BBI for the last decade that came, see where we started, see where, we're, where, we're, where we've become. And some bring tokens, some bring kind words, right? Um, because of some of the friends that we have um, of YEP over the years, we've been able to foster partnerships with people like um, the Harlem School of Arts, right? They came along and they did, um, they did a performance with us. So over the years, I guess, you know, the word of who Yep is and what we do has gotten out, outside of the BBL. It's going, numbers going, there we go. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Neo. Shout out to Yep. Shout out to the fantastic things that you do. All the children that's gonna see this. Listen, dream big, okay? Really, really big. If the dream is so big that it scares you, that's when you know that you're dreaming big enough, okay? Dream that big. And then be willing to do the work that it takes to make the dream come true, okay? That's the only secret to success. That's it. It's Neo. Peace and And just like a well-oiled machine, the operators of the organization are the key to the function of YEP. This is why they have transitioned from taking on volunteers to hiring persons full-time. So we, we depended upon the kindness of persons in the community, which worked for a period of time, but then it put a great uh, amount of pressure on the administrative staff because when volunteers had emergencies or maybe something came up in their life, they couldn't make it. So eventually we tried to push and find funding to actually hire people that would be here. And you know, we realized eventually that we needed to have people who were interested in doing this as a career. Um, after Hurricane Alma, we hired three individuals full-time to start to work here. Um, and through the Boys and Girls Club, they've been able to grade some training, right? And it, it's a profession now that we hope will be recognized. We're not teachers, right? Um, it's more of a facilitating type role, outcome-driven type role. Um, it's very pointed, but it's true root, root um, what should I say, purpose is to build relationships, relationships of trust. When a child trusts someone um, and believes that a person has only good intentions for them and it's a person outside of their family, it does a lot for them. Tanya and them, they love basketball. So every day, they, if they could get to play basketball 24-7, they'll play basketball 24-7. So I want to thank the coaches up there because on afternoons, or even during the day, or sometimes on afternoons, they have a basketball training program as well. So it's helping the boys develop their love for basketball in terms of the different drills and skills that they're learning. So yeah, so they've definitely improved in the sporting ability. And just for, as Mr. Mita, as a role model, because he, he and I have a personal relationship. I used to work for Guan Island. So I was with Yep from inception. So I always tell them, 
If they don't want to come to me, they can always go to Mr. Meter because I see him as a great role model for children on, on a whole. So any issues they have, they can go to Mr. Meter and he'll direct. And I have no doubt that he'll direct them in the right way. So basketball and just having role models in terms of Mr. Yep and the other instructors up there, they have improved on in that aspect. And then for my son, Tyreek, um, I would say he has improved tremendously because he was an only child up until this year. Yeah. So he had like, the only child syndrome. And he had a, a bit of a anger issue. Like, you know, he's always accustomed to his own space. So going to Yep and being around other kids, he would, if you touch him, and you watch him too hard, he would, yeah, he ready to fight. He ready to fight, <laughs> basically. And to me, like, I've seen how he has grown in terms of his being able to control himself and being able to socialize with other kids and not be angry. And in terms of, again, his public speaking, his sporting skills, and just social being happy and just you know, being a child, I've seen you know he's grown a lot, and I'm you know I'm very grateful and thankful and you know gratitude is a must. You know, Yep has definitely helped my child and myself in a lot of ways. So going forward, we hope that as Yep grows, our uh, staff can become more trained or can be be better trained. Um, and that a YDP, that profession in the BVI, actually is recognized. And that we see more YDPs, we see the title popping up throughout the BVI. So instead of seeing us as teachers or babysitters, you know, that's a youth worker, that's a youth development person. So that's a YDP. I do art with the kids. This way they will be able to express themselves through art. And I recognize that art is important, which you'll be able to bring up their creativity. So, and that way you really get to bond with the kids and you build their trust, which is very important for what we do at YEP. In order to have them doing more stuff and for them to be more comfortable with other stuff that we do at YEP. My son Russell Jones has improved tremendously because he had nothing to start with. So now he's at like able to talk to people, very energetic when it comes to certain activities. He still does not like a lot of things dealing with outside. Basically he is a lot more outgoing, which makes me more happy because when Stacy met me, I told her, help me. <laughs> help <laughs> me, my son is not a boy anymore. He's, he's like, like a pasty Korean boy who sits inside of a house. You know, take him outside. And Stacy did that for me. He he encouraged him. He got him involved in a lot of things. His staff, especially Kamik. Hey, Kamik. Um, she helped me. You know, with his, you know, artistic side. And then you know, there were some other things that helped me feel proud sending them to YEP and I think I will continually send them there. I don't think I'll be sending them to another program. I think his home is going to be at YEP. His name is will be very there. I could be with them. I just love the kids. <laughs> um, I didn't know that I was going to be a youth development worker but after working part-time and then being given the option to work full-time I was like, you know what, I could do this. The kids like me, I know what I'm doing to a degree. I could see that I'm making an impact. Um, and some of the kids, they're changing. And you could see the change, and I think that's really good. Kehlani became older. Um, and it's, it's evident because other persons that he interact with um, now speak up because he was very shy, he didn't say much. He'd speak to me, so I know he could talk your air off, but he'd get around people and I'd be nudging him to like, speak a little louder, they can't hear you because he'd say good morning, he'd say good afternoon, but you're like, did anybody hear that? So he's a lot more, um, he's much more bold now, and uh, um, it doesn't take him long to warm up and to step out to like speak to other individuals and appreciate the differences um, of the people around him. Now, do I have a perfect child? No. Um, is my child born of the techie age where you have to constantly yell, get off the phone, um, get off the computer, 
because you're on it too long and stuff like that that's still going on but I find that things are more structured now because there are things that he would um, pick up at yep and he come home and he start like looking stuff up of researching in addition to other things that he's doing so I find it as an enhancer um, he may not be able to do the after school program but once the summer programs and the Easter programs um, are there he definitely will be a person that will be participating in them not only is Yep unique in its offering, but past Yepies like Kai and Caitlin also come back to teach new Yepies. My name is Kai Christopher and I help my instructor, Mr. Lewis, with lessons. I ma We mainly play a game called Kahoot. It's really fun. It teaches kids about facts and plays really fun games. There's also a game called Nitrotype where it teaches the kids how to play, well, how to use a keyboard properly and how it tracks how fast you type, how accurate you are, and it gives you points for racing. It's a car racing game. You have to type to move. Um, hi, my name is Caitlin Blackman. I help Miss Osborne with um, the Yeppies. Basically what we do is like art related um, activities with the kids. We also have like icebreakers that we do in the mornings with that helps the kids break out their shell and get more comfortable with us. Cause I'm new, I'm an intern, so I want them to get more comfortable with me and open up. So that's what we do. And we're today we're teaching them about um, recycling because we're trying to put that initiative initiative into Yep. And so that's what we, what we basically do. The environment at Yep is very free spirited and diverse, which helps Yepies become free thinkers. Their work is fully integrated into the interior design. So, um, all the paintings in the building were painted by children over the years. Miss Osborne now has added new paintings by some of the younger ones and the older ones. Um, the pictures on the wall, um, some are recent, some are from the past. Uh, it's good for children to come in and see children that, hey, wait, I know him, he's a police officer, I see him. It lets them know others have come through the building. Um, color is very important. Psychologically, we know certain colors evoke certain feelings in people, right? And, you know, Yep is very eclectic, right? It's about expression, it's about feeling. You know, if you walk through the building, you'll see the decorations on the ceiling, you'll see the doors are decorated, and things change because, you know, children's personalities in the building are not all the same. We don't believe in producing children through mass production. You know, some are gonna be interested in this, some are gonna be interested in that. Some of them will react to things differently. So the environment needs to be that eclectic that it attracts different children. Yep gives young people a chance to meet new friends and develop interpersonal skills. Yep is better than staying home, playing video games all day, having nothing to do at all. Because Yep is really fun. You learn lessons, you make friends. It's actually where I made most of my friends. Not at school, more of here. And to come back here and um, help these other kids make friends with each other, it really just makes me happy. So my son, Kelani, um, I would say that he enjoys the program, but his level of excitement was not consistent. It depends on what they're doing, where his interests lie. So um, when he first went, um, he looked at me like, that, Mommy, that's a long way to go. And um, I like Mr. Meta, I like some of the programs, but some of the kids were much bigger than him, even though he was um, in his age group, he's relatively smaller than the other kids his age. So I guess he felt a bit um, intimidated. So the excitement was not there every day, but trust me, when there was something that that child liked, you didn't have to tell him to get up. You didn't have to say, get ready. You didn't have to say, you have to be on time. He would get up and do what he has to do because he has to get there, he has to get these things done. He did a two week sail with Sail Caribbean. And every boat that passed by, I was looking out on the porch, like, I wonder if that's my child sailing across. You know, but he was, he got to grow because he spent two weeks away from me. No contact besides calling home and saying we're okay, but being involved and engaged with a variety of different people. Well, my son, Russell Jones, um, he gets excited when he gets home. Um, when it comes to yep and activities, he is mostly just nonchalant. Um, I guess it's because he's been accustomed to being alone all the time and being around kids, he kind of get a little 
know of us. And the, the teachers at YEP been helping him become a little bit more accustomed to other people and their attitudes and behavior. Um, I would say, on, in, in, a, in a general way, he would be excited when it comes to the drawing and the art and stuff like that there. Um, he brought home some really cool things that they did at the art program. Um, the computer program, of course, he just, he just lives in that, you know. <laughs> I can't even ask why, but um, yeah, man, that is a given. But in general, his attitude is usually shy at first. He'll be like, I don't want to go that you. But then when he get there, he's all smiles and having fun. And then when he come back, yeah, I don't want to go back. And then he goes back. So it's like, um, I don't know, like, he like a woman like cut style. There is a misconception that Yep is only for children who live on the eastern end of the island. But this is further from the truth. Yep welcomes children from all backgrounds and communities in the territory. Yep is open to everyone. Um, I mean, I was under the guise when they first started that it was something meant for just that Eastern Long Look community. But that is, even if that's where their location is and that's where they started out with, with the kids in that community, their hands are far reaching. So it's open to every student, every child between the age of 18, well, I think it's 8 to 8, eight to what, 16, 17? Yeah. Somewhere 16. there about. Um, in, 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 the, in the BVI. And I mean, they help organize transportation as well because, yeah. you know, right now I'm not mobile, but they assisted with trying to help organize transportation to make sure that my son can get to and from his activities. So it's just a matter of if you're, um, if you're interested, just ask questions. You know, just ask some questions, ask the people that have been there, ask the kids that you see in the Yep t-shirts. I mean, you know, ask the members, jump on the Facebook page, um, look up their website. So the information is out there, um, you know, just find the tools and get at it. Where did you come from this morning? Where do you live? Alright. Um, Honorable Foy for the last five years buses children here every summer. My name is Devontae Bennett and I'm 12 years old and I live on the Creek. My name is Tiffany Robert and I live in Montelty and I'm 7 years old. My name is Amari Jones and I'm 10 years old and I live in Fat Hawksby. I like moving at me um, because that is fun and yet sometimes I don't get in trouble. And sometimes it's fun to be here. What I like most of being a EFP is to hang out with my friends and the instructors. The instructors. What, I like, what I like most about being a EFP is learning how to type faster and be with the instructors. You know, you actually stay home and you miss them sometimes and um, I do you miss them. And the kids get to show their art at the governor's house the other day. I think that was really good because some people still don't really know what we do at YAP. So when we were able to go to that event and they saw the paintings and stuff, it was really nice. It's like the kids from YAP, they could paint. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. And even with the many hearts, souls, and minds that have passed through YEP, there still aren't enough thanks for the priceless team at YEP. You know, YEP has definitely helped my child and myself in a lot of ways, especially me. You have to be on time if you're 9.15, which don't bring them again. Yeah. And trust <laughs> Very me, if I wake up late or if it's tight, I will be like, mommy, like mm -hmm. you you make me not be able to go to yep again you know like let's go mommy let's go so you know thank you thank you thank you yep you know there's not enough words um money that i can pay all the instructors oh, like, I, I truly appreciate you guys and what you have done for my son and all of these young people it's truly appreciated but just appreciative of all the hard work that the entire team because you know it, it takes that whole team mm -hmm and they step out there every day. And I'm excited to see where YEP is going to go, where it's going to transcend to. It's already affiliated with the Boys and Girl Clubs of America. Um, just getting that type of recognition and knowing that you're on par with other things that are out there outside of our sphere, I think is awesome. So to the people at YEP, to Stacy and his team, we say a great thank you. Thank you on behalf of our kids, all the other kids that are in there and all the kids that are there to come. 
you know you guys are doing a wonderful job and we just you know we pledge our support to continue to support you and just you know just keep it up Thank you.